This is Andrew for the Chosen Prime with a quick video preview of Gravity Builder GT01F Crane, or their updated take on a Constructicon hook, a part of their Gravity Builder series and combiner set. Um, this is a pre-production or test shot um, sample. Um, so all I have is the figure here. I do not have the instructions. Um, the additional features or pieces that I have, I do have his handgun that he comes with. And I also got, got his alternate face here for when he's in his combined mode. This is the screaming face. And I'll show how to install in the other uh, primary normal kind of face in a little bit. As far as his crane arm here, it is on a ratchet. And you can ratchet it up a full 90 degrees. And you can see there's little pivot pistons here that move as well. It can stretch about that far. This hook is on a double joint. So you can, and it's pretty stiff. You can rotate. Um, on the ratchet here. An additional feature here in crane mode is he does have stabilizing arms, so if we lift underneath here and uh, pry out these little arms, he can uh, stabilize as it would a modern day um, kind of crane uh, arm. And it's just a matter of just kind of, here it's easier to use a tool to kind of get it out the first couple times because it's a bit stiff. Then you can see how you can have him with uh, his stabilization arms. Um, he does have soft PVC or rubber wheels, um, all six of them. He does roll freely. So let's go ahead and get a closer look at um, some of his uh, vehicle mode detail. Taking a closer look here, you can see he's got a lot of nice detail across some little uh, ladders here, uh, rear canopy here, which actually stores the combined mode head um, pretty well. I mean, it's nice detail and paint kind of throughout. Um, being a test shot, um, I do have a couple of these uh, can canopy windows here I'm missing. I do have the pieces, and I think they'll be glued in on the final version. But for now, there's kind of these missing panels, but you can see what it looked like when they're fully installed. So you get a nice kind of clear open canopy here. So let's go ahead and transform him into his uh, robot mode. With this being a test shot, I do not have instructions, so I'll try to transform it as best I can. To start, we want to go ahead and lift up on this little kind of locking piece here that holds the two halves together. Come to this underside here. This little flap needs to untab from this peg here. Next, the feet will unpeg from each other and they will fold out and to the side. These are pretty stiff joints. Want to come to the legs here. There's a tab holding these two pieces of the front here. And now with the legs being free, we can go ahead and rotate this part around. This little tab here is on a swiveling arm hinge, similar to some of the other figures. And the pictures show that the kind of it sits flush on the leg like this. So, but you, you can, if you want to, you can rotate it down into the back of the leg. There's a bunch of different little pivoting options, but yeah, the official way that I saw is with it kind of sitting on the hip side of the hip. So we'll take this piece and move it to the side. We come to the inside of the legs here and these little panels here rotate around on both sides, kind of filling in the lower leg. Let's fold this little silver part in first. Filling in the part. And now you have options with the front of the legs here. These pieces here can rotate 180, so you can have them facing either way um, on both sides. But officially, they show that this one kind of is facing downward with this one facing up. And then this canopy here actually collapses. So we untab this piece and the two sides of the canopy will fold in and this will sit um, more flush. So again, it's up to you on how you want to kind of have these two pieces uh, kind of situated. But come to the feet and they will hit and pinch down and underwards. There is a heel spur on the bottom of each foot that will rotate out and these are rubberized to make it so that he is kind of slip resistant. This will be the other side as well. So flip it, hinge this forward into the bottom of the leg and then rotate out the heel spur. And that is his lower torso ready to go. We come to the crane part up here. I'm going to lift up on this entire plate. It'll untap from these two pegs here, freeing the arms. We take the arms and we unpeg them, and they will hinge down to the sides, like so. Come to one of these wheel sections, untap it, and then the arm will slide um, downwards like this. We can rotate this panel backwards. I'm going to do that on both sides, so rotate this down and then rotate the arm. And then behind each one of the shoulders here is this little kind of arm mechanism that you want to lift up, open up, and it'll come down and it'll close in and kind of fill in 
the shoulder there. So it's an interesting uh, little mechanism, this little arm that kind of just comes up to kind of fill in this space. And it will kind of tab in here to the top of each side. Come to this little flap here, open it up. Here's this head, we just flip it out. And then this, this will uh, tab in back into his chest. His hands, we'll open this panel up here and rotate out each one of his fists on both sides. Come to the backpack, come here, and there's this little panel we want to flip out so that it's flat. Rotate the entire backpack on that hinge, slide it all the way up, and it should lock into place. And there is a single green uh, peg here that'll peg into his back, locking the backpack in place. And now we want to take the crane part here and pop it, unlock it from the green part, hinge it forward. There's a lot of different hinges on this crane section. And that little flap here will peg in to the crane part and lock the crane upwards. Take the crane, we want to hinge it 90 degrees. And at this point, we want to bend it here and that'll make it so that this is now short enough that when he stands up, he's fine. And one little thing I forgot is that you can take the wheels here and they fold back in onto the leg. And you can also then take this piece here and fold it and cover the leg. So it's personal preference on how you want to kind of have this piece uh, kind of covering the legs. But there is Crane in his robot mode. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of his detail. Taking a look here at Crane's robot mode, you can see he's got a lot of nice detail. Um, here as a updated version of Hook, um, nice bits of paint, purple, green, silver, um, just a nice uh, kind of complement of everything as far as being a modern update of a Constructicon. As far as uh, articulation, his head is on a ball joint. He does have that clear kind of golden um, light piping. His shoulders here can rotate at the uh, shoulder. He does have that uh, ratchet here, um, bicep swivel, um, mostly uh, double jointed elbow. His hand can rotate, standard kind of one set of fingers um, for the hand. His waist can rotate. He does have uh, universal hips that are pretty stiff. They can move forward and back. Uh, upper thigh swivel there, um, lots of ratchets. Uh, stiff knee, if you move this panel out of the way, you can get some uh, deep knee bends. Um, his foot does have uh, multiple places to pivot and, and swivel, as well as the kind of rubberized heels here. So he's got a lot of uh, kind of options there. These panels here can kind of rotate however you like to kind of get them out of the way. As far as the backpack, um, he, you can see that this is kind of the back canopy that holds the combined mode head, and then the crane has to angle like this in order to fully be uh, kind of flush for him to stand correctly. But he actually does not need um, this piece to stand up and hold his weight. It actually can slide off. Um, there's two kind of sliding tabs that match tabs here, and you can have, remove it. And he does not need that to stand up correctly. Uh, the heel spurs he has um, are to do a just good enough job without needing that as kind of like a crutch. If you do ever have issues with this backpack kind of being a little bit loose, it's just a matter of kind of that screw here where the uh, slide mechanism is just tighten that down, and then the backpack will hold nice and securely. Um, again, being a test shot, uh, things like these windows here aren't glued in place, but on the final one, they will be there. And then, um, as far as his weapon, you just take it and you can slide it into the kind of the piece part on his hand here and you can wield his gun. But overall, it's a nice kind of updated version of Hook here um, in his robot mode. So let's go ahead and take a look at like what he looks like when he's uh, combined into his torso mode. To get Crane into his upper torso mode, we want to first take him and split him in half. You can see there's a joint here. We want to split him in half. And then this peg will match into this peg hole here. We'll get the arm connector ports out. Here, you can see them here. You really are gonna wanna use a tool, but you wanna ratchet them out. And they are made of uh, metal, so they'll be nice and stiff and uh, not prone to breakage, which is a nice little bonus. Next, we'll wanna transform this head and crane assembly here, which can be a bit tricky, um, kinda of getting it all out of the way. So let's first untab the uh, crane part here and get it out of the way, so we can see this entire headpiece here. These two flaps at the side will open up, and as well as the back. 
We want to come to the head here, and you can see where the face is kind of hidden there. We want to rotate it around so we can see it um, upwards like that. Come to these little flaps here, rotate this piece, and then it'll bend back and close around the head, kind of finishing off the head there like that. Now we want to take this entire kind of crane part and ro it, rotate it um, 180, lift up this little clear canopy here, and then next to the head here is this little kind of T part that'll sit into this channel here. And we want to get it so that it sits in that, that spot, and then it'll lock, once we put this down, it'll lock the head into position. The crane arm pieces, these two gray tabs, will peg into this spot right here. And then the back of the head here, as far as I can tell, just kind of sits flat like that. And that's essentially how the head here works. And you can see that that's got the uh, kind of screaming face um, installed there. And then finally, we can take the wing from a uh, dump truck, and here's how it comes uh, installed. And we just unfurl these little wings here on both sides, rotate these wings, um, pull down this, and there's the chest swing. Now, we've seen some pictures where this looks like it could light up. Um, I have opened this up. There are no LEDs or electronics in there. I'm not quite sure how they lit it up. And the same thing with the head. I don't see um, anywhere that the, there's any kind of electronics for lighting up the eyes and the head. But as far as this wing here, you take these two pegs here that match these two pegs on the front of the vehicle. And you just make sure that you uh, plug it in. There's also an additional peg on the right side here to hold it. And there is the kind of chest wing assembled. With the crane arm here, if you don't want it studying straight out, there is that hinge that's here that lets you kind of have it um, fold down on his back. Or you can actually remove it just like we did um, when using robot mobing, just slide it off. And then there is uh, his head uh, just as is. If you want to replace the faceplate, it is just stuck on with a couple of little uh, pegs. So it's a matter of just kind of pulling off and you can see the pegs that are there. And we can install kind of the stoic, uh, non-screaming face by just pushing and pegging it on there. And there is Crane in his kind of upper torso mode. And it's pretty cool. Um, it looks not much nicer when it's all combined. Um, it's a nice looking head. You do have uh, a swivel here and a basic uh, kind of pivot um, up and down. Um, so it's a nice kind of update here on uh, a Devastator. So let's go ahead and take a look at some comparisons for uh, their version of Hook. Robo Mill comparisons, um, here is the Combiner Wars version of Hook, and again, here's Crane. You can see how much more detailed the one from uh, Gravity Builder looks, um, and just a lot more paint and detail and overall posability options um, versus the official one from Generations. And again, you have a lot more options with the Crane, weapons and such, and just overall posability and paint um, with the third party offering here. Vehicle mode comparisons. Again, you can see how much larger Crane is than his official counterpart here, and just a lot more detail on the effort from Gravity Builder and Generation Toy. And you do have a lot more options with the Crane arm on uh, the Gravity Builder one, whereas this just moves up and down, doesn't even extend. So, definitely get a much nicer uh, Crane from uh, Crane here. Comparing Crane with some other third-party versions of Hook, here we've got TFC's Dr. Crank, and we've got Toy World's Allocator. As you can see, um, Crane here in the middle is the middle-sized version of the uh, updated Hook. Um, definitely more of a Voyager style and scale version of Hook than, um, say, the offering from Toy World here on the right. Um, but he's definitely an uh, improvement over, you know, Dr. Crank here on the left in comparison. It's just a lot nicer, a lot more detail than, you know, the original third-party version of Hook for your classes collections. Um, comparatively, um, both Dr. Crank and uh, Crane here can remove their actual crane arms to be separate, unlike the Toy World one here. Comparing vehicle modes, again, you can see how the one from Gravity Builder here is the middle ground between the three third-party cranes and versus the hook. He's definitely the best overall detailed version as far as the classics version, a modern updated version, definitely compared to the TFC one. And this is a nice uh, kind of overall um, modern take on a hook. When comparing all of the crane arms and how they extend the uh, 
one from TOC actually goes the longest, but you still get a nice bit of uh, posability and movement from the one from uh, Generation Toy. And it's kind of, again, the best kind of overall modern update of a crane vehicle. Some final thoughts on Gravity Builder GT01F crane or Generation Toy's updated take on a new modern hook is that they've done yet another great job of kind of making a nice Voyager upscaled um, and more detailed version of a Constructicon. Um, like the other previous five figures, this is yet another um, great toy um, from the company. It's a very solid toy. The paint, the plastics sit nice. Um, definitely a lot of posability options for even as much as this guy has to do. Um, definitely, and the joints are there, the build's there. It's just a great um, figure. And then, you know, again, that it combines into a nice large uh, third party uh, Devastator is another bonus. Um, we expect to get our stock of this guy within the next month or two. Um, do remember that if you do order all six of the Generation Toy Gravity Builder figures, um, we will be including the kind of legend scale um, Megatron that comes with the set that the Gravity Builder can hold. Um, so don't forget about that bonus. Um, so if you've gotten the other figures so far, this is yet another release. Or if you're looking for a nice updated Devastator, um, Crane here is an excellent figure. So take care.